What's up gamers, today we're going to be giving you the ultimate skyblock guide. This will help you in your journeys on the grind and wasting your life. If you have any questions, we hope this video will be the answer. Quick note, this is a lot of information and it is cumulative. So watch the whole video if you have a question, because if something at the beginning doesn't make sense, the end will hopefully explain it. So, all right, next up is fishing bag. This just holds all of your bait. And to increase the size of your fishing bag, uh, fish, I mean, you just gotta get a lot of raw fish. I think you need like 50K, crazy, to max it out. There, There's different types of bait and each have different buffs. Um, you can buy it at the bazaar, which is really nice. You don't have to craft it anymore. But some of it's really expensive, like whale bait, like 1.2K per, like, ooh, that's just horrible. So I would advise using fish or spike bait. Those are the two best baits like for how much they cost please so yeah unless you're freaking jeff bezos out here irl trading left and right then you ain't gonna want to be using whale bait all right so next up the quiver legit just holds arrows and it can hold magma cream if you have a magma bow so yeah value all right fast travel so if you right click the fast travel thing you will go to the hub if you're at your private island or you will go to your private island if you're at any of the islands, although sometimes it warps you to the hub because high pixel is smart. So if you left click it, it'll pull up your fast travel menu. Now, this looks really weird and it is weird. So if you look on the right, there's just a bunch of them. There's like 25 of them or something. Good at math. And you can just click there to warp instantly. Now, to be able to go to these certain places and warp instantly, they're very specific places like Hub Crypts or Top of Spider's Den. You need to scroll for that place. And to get that scroll, you either craft it in a collection or you buy it from an NPC. I would just buy them at the AH though because it's obnoxious running around the map trying to find them. Oh, quick note, um, a lot of the really good ones like Hub Crypts, like a lot of the ones that actually matter, or Howling Cave, you need MPC Plus. So, uh, pay to win alert! Yeah, like my UI looks a lot different than Gunner Mutt's. I legit have 10 possible places I can go, so yeah. Pretty the fool. So next up is profile management. Um, this is where you can change or create a new profile. Each profile is entirely independent and no stats or money carry over profile to profile. You can always create a co-op where you can play on a profile with up to four other people. And with higher ranks, you unlock more profile slots, so obviously, pay to win! And one last thing about profiles, um, if you try and have a bunch of minions on one profile, and then get the money, and then trade it over to like a co-op member, or just someone you trust, and transfer it to another profile, that's boosting, which is bannable, and people have been banned for doing that, so I just would not recommend doing that. All right, next up is booster cookies. These are actually really helpful, although right now they're like freaking expensive because I honestly don't know why, but by eating a booster cookie, you obtain the cookie buff. C -c cookie buff remix. So you get skill XP, I think it's a 20% skill XP buff. Gives you 15 magic find for the amount of time each booker, booker. Each booster cookie lasts four days. And you can't lose coins, so if you void yourself, you don't lose any coins. And probably the best thing of all, which is worth like two mils every four days, you can do slash AH, slash bazaar, slash anvil, slash enchanting table, which is just like the best chat command of all time. Slash AH doesn't work in dungeons, but bazaar does. So their booster keys are sort of an IRL currency because they give you bits, first of all, which can be used to buy stuff at the community center, more on that later, but to get a booster cookie, like, into the community, you have to pay our own money. Like, pay to win alert, like, bruh moment, high pixie little rat. So then, after you buy them, after you spend, uh, like, 300 bucks and sell your wife and children, you can just go over to the bazaar and sell the booster cookies you bought, and boom, you're rich. Let's go. That was worth it, bro. You can find another wife, but you can't find any more booster cookies. It's the only way. It has to be done. Also, there's a fame rank, which just gives you more votes in election, which doesn't matter anyways. You get that by spending bits and gems, so it's just pay to win again. And then also it shows how many bits available 
Uh, and that what that means is if you have had booster cookies and you didn't get all the required bits, um, that's just how many bits you can get by activating booster cookies. So yeah. So settings. This is where you go to access API settings, island settings, and player drop settings, and basically just quality quality of life settings. So this is like personal settings. So for example, I have player trading on. Um, skill numerals on if you're like an idiot and you can't read roman numerals up to five then you can turn this off and it'll say like one two three instead of i i i i v but that's stupid um and then there's all this different stuff again it's just mainly stuff i would suggest uh turn off pick up arrows with full quiver it is obnoxious um and then you can also they just recently added this you can turn off ability chat. So if you're using a flower truth and it's flooding your entire chat, you can turn that off. In fact, I'm gonna turn that off right now. So yeah, basically just quality of life stuff. I'd suggest make like pick up um, like uncommon minimum. That way you don't pick up boats and crap. And definitely enable all of your uh, API settings. So, cause it just helps with like bots and discord and stuff. All right, now the sack of sacks. You think you've seen a ball sack? Well, this is the sack of all sacks. This is where sacks are stored, and there's almost a stack for every skill except for useless ones. Like, there's no enchanting sack, because what would you put it in books? So there actually is a rune sack, which is really good, because even with an item ability, or not item ability, even with minimum player drop, on uncommon, you can still pick up common runes. They are the devil, so. Boom, rune sack clutching up here. You have to buy it for like 10,000 bits, so it costs like a million coins worth of bits at the community center, so have fun with that. It's pretty good. There's also a dungeon sack, which just gives, like, picks up inflatable jerrys and crap. There's a bunch of useless items that you get, just cluttered your inventory. So, they, instead of, like, if I pick up a potato, it's not going to go in my inventory, it's going in my sack. That's, that's how clutch sacks are. So if you pick up any random item, it'll just go into your sack. And there are some enchanted sacks for certain skills, like for combat, the enchanted combat sack. If you get, pick up an enchanted spider eye, it'll put it in that sack. So even enchanted items, go bye-bye. So sacks, the only annoying thing about sacks is that they can't be sold on the AH or Bazaar. So you either have to craft it yourself, or you have to find some random to craft it for you, although I wouldn't do that, I would just get the collection. They're always found in collections, except for like the dungeon sacks. So yeah, you can't, you can't trade it either, so it's kind of obnoxious to get a sack if you don't want to do it yourself, but I mean, Bean Jeans, just, just take after him and do everything yourself. AH, who needs it? All right, next up is the potion bag. So this bag is pretty much useless um, now that god pots exist, but I mean, there's still pretty value because you can hold dungeon potions um, if you're like one of those sweats. Or if you don't want to buy a god pot, but you want like some of the effects, you can hold those in there, I guess, but yeah. Um, the main thing it's used for um, is to fill it up with bottles of Jerry that you can get at the Jerry Festival. Um, so yeah, you can upgrade the bag size with the nether wart collection, but that's not really that useful, so gnarly. Alright boys, next this is the big boy, the accessory bag. Ah, the mighty accessory bag. Cost the Skyblock community hundreds of billions of dollars for coins. Maybe dollars too. It holds accessories, items that are entirely useless, except for a few ones that are kind of helpful like the night vision charm. Accessories can be reforged at a blacksmith, and th this is like, if you go into your accessory bag, you'll see that some of them are just useless. Like, what is this? Freaking wolf paw. Oh, I get one speed without the reforge. One speed? Are you kidding me, Hypixel? So, besides, the wolf paw is like 500k if you don't do the race yourself. And this is the only reason accessories are good. It's because of reforges. You can go to the blacksmith, which is found in the hub, at his little blacksmith's like shack like straight from spawn and you can reforge accessories now they'll just give you random stats like right now if i'm looking at this accessory uncommon i get two strength and eight intelligence so that's actually not even that bad it's better than the one speed that it actually gives me 
that's what accessories are used for. You can craft them and you can get them in collections. Some of them are got from Slayers and then some of them are from Dungeons. Uh, you can buy, I think, every single one on the, like every single accessory on the AH, which is what I would do, except for a few, like the Wolf's Paw, which you can get in a race, and the Day and Night Crystal can't go on the AH because Hypixel's just like, ha, got them. And Melody's hair, you have to win that by being a sweat and having good paint. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. And then there's the Romeo and Juliet thing, which that's a whole nother thing. We'll get to that later. But, uh, yeah, accessories, you waste a lot of money on them. Don't worry about it early game. It's just, dude, it's going to blow like a mill like Jack did. I didn't say anything. What? We're basically heading back to the 18th century here because slavery is back in business, baby. Call me a sharecropping institutor because these are my sharecroppers, baby. So basically, minions work for you 25 hours a day, 8 days a week, 2 months a month, until their storage is full. So you can upgrade them. Um, so basically, if you right click on them, you can see you can equip them with minion skins. These are purely cosmetic, but if you're not using the killer minion skin, what are you doing? Um, there is enchanted lava buckets and just... This is the fuel slot, so it basically just makes them work faster. Um, you can add a hopper, which automatically sells their stuff after they're full. Um, you can add compactors or super compactors, which compacts everything into its enchanted form. By the way, since we haven't said it, I'll just say it right now. An enchanted version of something is basically just a way to show that there is a lot of it without it taking up a ton. So, for example, if you have, like two and a half stacks of redstone dust that is one enchanted redstone dust so that's what an enchanted item is but yeah basically um there's um also like the upgrade thing so if you if you don't have diamond spreading you are dumb you need diamond spreading it's super cheap it's legit just an enchanted diamond surrounded by eight vines so yeah and basically what that does is it makes your minions make diamonds so yep makes you rich um so you can upgrade your minions a lot and you can get more minion slots by upgrading them in the community center or crafting more unique minions. Crafting unique minions gets expensive and you should not go more than 22 base minion slots um, if you want to be smart about it. And just so you know we have 27 snow minions because we have 22 base minion slots and all 5 from the community center. And we get 1.4 million coins a day just from minions. So we don't even really play. And we are getting rich off of them. So that's why minions are important. You should always focus on minions. Don't don't ignore minions. They're crucial. Alright, scammers and IRL trading. So first of all, don't IRL trade unless you're going to do it with the booster cookies. Because you'll probably get caught. And even if you don't get caught, uh, you suck. So... You'll just get banned and wiped. But it's actually a pretty funny troll because if you're on the same profile as someone and you're caught like doing something wipeable, they'll wipe the whole profile, them included. And then you can laugh at them and be like, lol, there goes a thousand hours of your life. So yep, yeah, uh, don't trust anyone because they're all bums and they'll all kill you and shoot you in the leg. So if someone says, join my Discord for 50 mil, don't do it. Bit of my age, I'm quitting Skyblock. They're not quitting Skyblock. Oh yeah. Uh, I'm looking to buy some essence. Oh, what? You, uh, uh, you just lost five mil. What are you doing, kid? So, yep. Uh, if you want to come to our Discord, we're all trustworthy, except for 95% of us, because they're just gangsters. But, uh, there's like two people that you might trust, like Fishy, because actually he's the only one with a brain on the Discord. Maybe Dave, because Dave's like 34 or something. But everyone else, they're just bums, so, yeah, don't trust them. Alright boys, thanks for watching the video, please like and subscribe, or else I will force feed you a can of refried beans. We stream every Thursday, Friday, and Saturday at 11.30pm Eastern Time, you know the drill. And at the streams, we just hang out with the boys and just do ram crap. Our streams are quality premier content, aka if you want to watch absolutely horse crap hogwash audio at 720p, that's where you want to be, baby. But I'm not a rapper. And bye-bye, don't do drugs.